Hi students, this is Professor Carpenter. I've completed reviewing the rough drafts of your comparison and contrast essays and wanted to share with you topics our learning community selected, along with lessons learned. What topics did we choose to compare and contrast? Here's a list of some of the types of topics that you chose to compare and contrast. Theme parks, uh, for example, University versus uh, Universal versus Walt Disney, sports companies, for example, Nike versus Adidas. Some of you selected academic themes, such as on-campus versus off-campus housing, online versus face-to-face -face learning. Some selected leaders, uh, for example, George Washington versus Abraham Lincoln, Adolf Hitler versus Joseph Stalin. Uh, some of you selected religions, for example, Judaism versus Christianity. Uh, some of you selected Islam versus Christianity or Islam versus uh, Judaism. Some selected to compare fast food restaurants, for example, Chick-fil-A versus McDonald's. So here is just, uh, just some graphics of some comparison and contrast topics that you selected and some of the type of data that you included in your essays. This one for living on and off campus. Some of you also selected comparing cities, such as New York City and Los Angeles, or books. Uh, one of you selected The Fault Upon Our Stars, uh, the book version versus film, so book versus film versions. Uh, another person selected The Hunger Games, uh, the book versus the film. Um, here's some, uh, some leaders that you compared and com contrasted, Thomas Jefferson versus Abraham Lincoln. Some of you selected soccer players, um, religions fast food restaurants. Uh, one of you actually selected quantum mechanics versus classical physics. Here are some interesting titles from the learning community. Uh, one person selected the two K's I couldn't live without. That was about comparing and contrasting two friends uh, that, whose names started with K. Uh, another title, going classic in New York City and surfing sunny side up in Los Angeles. So some alliteration there. Uh, a magical indecision. Uh, you can imagine that one's about the theme parks. The Fault in Your Movie uh, was another one about the book versus movie comparison or The Fault in Our Stars. Two Decisions of Learning, uh, that one's about online versus face-to-face. -face. And the restaurant Chick-fil-A versus um, McDonald's, Chicken or Beef was the title there. So those are interesting. Here are some openings uh, which were good um, and uh, really capture your attention. For example, when someone is shooting at you, you always assume the shooter is the bad guy. Although you have your differences, however, you may be more alike than you think. So that's interesting. Um, another one started with uh, you know, a common phrase, laughter is the best medicine. What better way is there to take your medicine than with your best friends? So here are some um, additional uh, openings which catch our attention. Um, notice that you can start with a question such as, have you ever had to choose between two amazing places and struggle to make a decision between the two? Um, you can start with a quote, such as, laughter is the best medicine. Um, or you can start with, a, with a, uh, an example. When someone's shooting at you, you assume the shooter is the bad guy. So those are some strategies. Uh, here's one about comparing a book and a film. In the world of book adaptations, there are a few instances when movies can truly compare to their fictional counterparts. Notice that that one sets up a thesis statement. So uh, I uh, included these in a PowerPoint presentation. You can scroll through and see some examples from your classmates. Um, these are good ways to, to start and open and capture our attention. I've included uh, most of those here a few. So let's look at strong thesis statements. Um, so these will set up exactly what you're going to compare and contrast. Uh, for example, the book and movie versions of The Fault of Our Stars are similar in presenting the main characters uh, fall in love and grow stronger together. They differ in the presentation of specific details and the absence of minor characters from the movie. So notice you set up the similarities here and also the differences for your reader. Um, here's one with restaurants. Even though Chick-fil-A and McDonald's both serve fast food and have similar target audiences, these restaurants differ in number of sales, basis of operation, and mission statements. So there, um, 
the writer is setting up each point of comparison and in the text of the essay um, um, he will compare each of those between the two restaurants. Here's some additional strong thesis statements. While Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln are both ranked among the top most effective presidents, they differ in philosophy, preparation for the position, and party affiliation. So here you see specific points of comparison in the essay that are set up. Here are some effective transitions. Um, even though Erwin Rommel and Bernard Montgomery were two different people fighting for two different countries for two different causes, they were more alike than one might think. Um, and some transitions here. The first difference between these two American presidents is philosophy. So that sets up, that's a topic sentence um, where the author will start to compare two American presidents, in this case uh, Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln, on philosophy. Here are some additional effective uh, transitions. Although these two ways of taking classes differ, the end result of both is that you will get knowledge and tools that will be useful in the future. So let's look at some global issues that I saw. First of all, lack of citations in the text of the paper. Uh, here, uh, one of the things that I saw overall was that sources are listed on the Works Cited page, but when I looked in the text of your essay, they were not cited in the paper. So lesson learned, make sure to not only document the sources on the Works Cited page, but within the paper. Um, also a lack of depth of, rest of, of research. Um, uh, I saw some papers where the author used only one source or used only sources from company websites. So make sure uh, in lessons learned to perform some in-depth research before your final draft from a variety of sources. Find current research. For example, if you're comparing sales of two restaurants, find data that is six months uh, old, not three years old. Look for specific facts, statistics, and expert comments. And here is an example of, uh, really from one of the papers, of an in-text citation. So this person had Erwin Rommel as the, uh, on the uh, works cited page. And notice here that the in-text citation had the URL in the text. So instead of doing that as a learning community, what we should do is have the source. So for example, you could put the title of the author here, the, uh, I mean the title of the article at the end of the quote, or you can have the source according to an article on Erwin Rommel published by Jewish Virtual Library there. Uh, here's another one. Um, you can put the title of the article here at the end when you mention the survey by the College Board and you uh, mention statistics. So notice here, here was the before and when you add the title, um, the title of the article here, um, that will be a proper in-text citation. So for example, uh, here instead of 2011 statistics, you'll want to use, uh, in, this, in this case, this is what the author used um, to compare on-campus and off-campus. Instead of 2011, I'd recommend using something like uh, at least 2014, 2015, uh, current research. So that's the wrap up and I look forward to uh, looking at your revisions and, um, and reading your final drafts.